All right, guys, uh, one thing I wanted to ask you is, what was the decision that prompted you guys to uh, to finally get back together and do material for a new record? To me, it felt like it was unfinished business, you know, and I didn't want it to, uh, the, the, the legacy of Black Sabbath to end. It was one of those things that you kind of, deep down, you all knew has to be done. I think we all wanted to do it, you know. It was just a matter of time, of, of being able to come to the right time to be able to do it. We, we tried about 10 or 11 years ago or something, to put some, write some stuff, and it never quite happened. The, the amazing thing too is I've seen the Australian footage, and the album was not out when you guys did those shows. No. And the reaction to the new material was amazing. Do you notice that when you're on, how people are reacting to the unheard yeah. material? We were worried about that at first, even just playing new material, because of, of course, with the internet and YouTube and all that, it'd be all over the place with the new songs. But, <clears throat> but the reaction was good, yeah. Especially with them not hearing it, not knowing it. Does this feel more satisfying than, say, Reunion did? Because with Reunion, it was all these classic songs, but now you really are coming out for the first time in all these years, with, and it's, it's relevant and it feels oh, heavy. It's been great fun. It's really, really enjoying it now. It's, uh, once we got rolling, you know. When you do new songs, you don't know how the audience is going to react. But as you just said about Australia, the album was not even released, and some of the tracks I don't already know, you know. And the single was released, wasn't it? I don't even know if God is Dead was out at that point. It might no, have been, but I know Loner it. wasn't out or any of these other ones. Oh, no, no, God is Dead was being played on the radio. Oh, it just was. As, yeah, just as uh, like a full thing for the tour. And, uh, and people picked up on it. They were singing the, along to it when we were doing the song. Is there a doubt that you have? I mean, you guys have all worked for so many years, even after Sabbath. But is there a, like a moment when you get together and you're like, will this still work? Will people still respond to it? Every, every night I go on stage, I'm still, I go, I want to go. We've been doing this for 45 years. I'm like, 45 years, man. I mean, when I was a kid, if my dad had said to me, come and see this, this, this artist, what you see, and just the fact that my, my dad liked it, I wouldn't have liked it, you know. But, but I don't, you know, it's funny, like you said, my father, if my dad had come to me and said, hey, I want, my, my father loves Bob Seeger. And because of that, I never listened to Bob Seger because you want to have your own thing. But there's something about your music that there's, it's okay for the dad to like it. It just instead of making the music sound old, it makes your dad seem cool when your father likes Black Sabbath. That's another thing I wanted to ask you about is the amazing age differential in your audience. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, he keeps shaking out at night. Jump, jump, jump. But some, some of them guys are seventy odd. <laughs> Those that can do. <laughs> All the young ones doing it, you know, you can pick out the older ones. Yeah, and the other ones just kind of doing like a yeah. shoulder movement. <laughs> <laughs> the guy that's right in the front, he sat down, he couldn't move. So he got a bucket of water over him and then it, it moved a bit. Everybody stand on your feet and the one guy goes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's funny that, that people, like you said, when I saw you guys last was in New Jersey, and we came with a friend uh, and his 14-year-old nephew, and he'd never seen you guys live. And, and he was as blown away as most 14-year-olds you'd think would be watching One Direction or any of these quote-unquote yeah, yeah. new bands. So the fact that you've remained relevant for 45 years, is, it's almost unequaled. It's incredible. I mean, and and as you say, there's new kids coming all the time. It's, it's amazing to see them. I mean, you know, looking last night, there's young kids on the dad's shoulders, you know. Wives on the kids' shoulders. I mean, it's amazing. Wives on the kids' shoulders. It's like a whole family pyramid stacked up. <laughs> I, I noticed, it's funny, Tony, I'll watch you on stage sometimes, and you, and you just always seem so happy to be there because you'll be looking down, and then you'll just look up and smile, and then kind of look back down. I, it's like I it am, never seems to get old. I am happy to be there. It's great. I'm really enjoying it, and it's, it's, it's great that so many people are, are coming out to see us as well and to be playing with the, the guys again. You know, I think it's, you couldn't get better than that. Well, you know, a lot of the summer festivals have been having a hard time, and then you guys are, which I think is due to your tour, I think is just is just destroying everybody else's summer because bands are doing, you know, 1,500 seats out of 10,000, 12,000 people, and you guys are doing huge numbers. So it, it, I guess the album coming out as highly ranked in, in, on, on the charts as it did is helpful. Yeah. But that had to be a complete shock. I mean, I know you guys weren't ready for that. I mean, number one in America was, was always one of my goals. But it's obviously number one in so many countries, it's mind-blowing. In Japan, it went to number five first week, and I thought, that was just reasonably good. And the following week, it went to number one, and I'm like, what? Yeah, it's been incredible. Oh, it actually jumped from five to yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. I was like, wow. Could you feel momentum building with this record? Uh, in actual yeah. fact, we were, so, uh, we were so busy writing it for so long, you know, and, and we, 
So you don't understand why, but some way we've finished an album, we've been planning for like a year or so, you know. So it's like we wanted to get it done and get out there. You never go into the studio and go, oh, I'm going to make a bad record, or, oh, I've had a good one, it's time for a bad record. You want everyone to beat the, beat the last one, and this, this one beat every, every record I've ever done. And we were getting feedback from, you know, other people that's heard it. Rick Rubin played it to some people, and he'd say, oh, yeah, they love it, and these are other musicians, and it was just starting building from that, you know, and uh, the word of mouth. I've had waitresses come up to me in comedy clubs, and they're and they're you know they know I'm a Sabbath freak, and they're like, the, the new record is great. Like people that would never have listened to Black, there's something about this record that maybe it was just the advertising that finally got people to listen who wouldn't have listened before. I think so. Yeah. But the response has been from so many different genres of people. You're hitting way more than Sabbath fans, and are you, you are you kind of sensing that? Have you felt that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean we've always been you know kept underground for many years, and then sort of now, I mean it's really been brought to the foreground, and it's it's. The, the attention's been sort of thrown at it big time, you know. What was the promotion like for you on this one compared to the last one you did together? Because back in the older days, it was so much different. Our first album was just word of mouth. I remember I was being in a, a, a club and the manager at the time said to us, your album goes in the charts at number 17 or something next week. And I'm like, what? You know, just to take a record off to your folks and go, look, I made a record, that was, that was a big deal for me. Once you know you're number one, do you, do you start checking everything and every day? No, and no I have no. no idea what it was the next week. No. I was just happy to get <laughs> number one. <laughs> you didn't get great? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. get any better than that, does After it? That, so yeah, you don't want to start looking because eventually yeah, everything... You want to go out. <laughs> yeah, who wants to look and go, oh good, number two now. It's like you want to just yeah. be, yeah. yeah. Yeah, What has the uh, tour schedule been like for you guys? It seems like it's a pretty rigorous schedule. No, it's not, it's not been that bad. It's been like one day on what will show, show day off, show day off, show day off. Is that easier for you to do like like one well, day on, one day off? It's not easy. It's just, it's just necessary. I think you get into a role as well, you know. When you have four or five days break in between, it's almost like, oh, you gotta come back again and stuff. Oh, okay, so if you take too many days off, it's almost like then you're relaxed and you don't want to reboot from zero as opposed to just kind of ebb and flow. That's and right, flow. Yeah. Has the tour been as difficult on you as you thought or has it been a little bit easier than you thought? Like, I noticed no difference on stage whatsoever and, and you guys have indicated that Tony's just not the kind of guy who complains about things, who just kind of, you just... Never. That's an amazing quality to me. I, I enjoy a good complaining. I'm going to start moaning now. Right, right. <laughs> but is that is that something that uh, is that a quality you picked up uh, from from childhood? Or I'm amazed at people who can just kind of tough it out and, and do the work. Well, I, I don't really have an option. It's either not do it or do it, and I, I like to do it. And it's, it's great to be with the guys. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to do it going out there on my own. I wouldn't do it. I mean. And what it, for you guys, uh, do you have a ritual before you go on stage? Because uh, when we see you, it's just... Yes. <laughs> what, what is it that you do as performers before you go on? Well, we've all got different things I, we I do. I want my voice up. I do a <coughs> sort of voice vocal exercise where I go and do a bit of physical uh, jumping around. But it's about, I don't know too much. Is there yeah. anything you can't eat before? Like, I, if I drink milk, like the... Yeah, <coughs> that get, fucking horrible yeah. sound, and you never want that. No. I think you do get into a, a thing of your little way of working. And uh, I know my routine when I get there is to have a drink of vegetable juice and all that stuff. We used to have a bottle of and vodka. Then, and then you, you sort of <laughs> sit down, play for a bit, and then I have a break and then eat. And it's just, you just get into that routine of what you're going to do before the show. And it is, you're right, I guess at one point it was a bottle of vodka and then... No, no, a line of drugs, this. Yeah. It's just <laughs> wine now that I have. You just have a little bit of wine. an empty of line now. before I go yeah. on, yeah, and six beers. Oh, that's good. <laughs> it's just something to just kind of even out. But you out. do drink the beers through the show, so that's not so bad. Do you drink yeah. beers through? Yeah, six of them before I go on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you have something easier that you have to do before a show? Yeah, I do a bit of yoga. And then I listen to whatever's in the top ten. Just and to kind of I, take your mind off it a little bit? Yeah, and then I have chewing gum. Do you? And I, I have a wee every five minutes. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think me we're too. all the same as that. Every time you keep going to the toilet just before you go on, it's that bit of nerves, I think. I literally would just stand there and nothing comes out. I'm like, what's yeah. the oh, fucking yeah, matter yeah, with me? Yeah, just, it's like a happy, you've got to <laughs> you go. You get the feeling that you want to go, but you don't... And you leave yeah. it right to the last minute, right, we're on in yeah, a couple of minutes. Yeah, that's the last go. minute. <laughs> and you have to carefully tuck it away in case you get a wet stone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm beyond caring about that. I'll, 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 I'll put the half a gallon down. You know, I have a wet stone, I go, oh, well, there is something in there. <laughs>
That's why he throws water on himself so you don't notice. <laughs> oh, so, so, well, what, do you, well, what do you do when you're on the stage, Jim? Uh, you're gonna go, you don't stop the show, you just go, I want to piss, I'll piss. I've never, I've never had the luxury of actually pissing on stage, but I would love to because <laughs> it just seems like such a, like you don't have to obsess about it before you go on. I, I, but I make the host, I'm like, you gotta do two minutes before I go on. And there's nothing yeah, worse than yeah. when you hear. It's all right when you want to shit though, it's even worse. <laughs> yeah, that's, what are you gonna throw, you gonna throw chocolate ice cream on yourself? <laughs> <laughs> there's not much you can do about it. I've had times where I thought I was going to get physically sick on stage, too. I, I was going through a thing where I'm like, I'm going to vomit. And I finally just said to myself, it became a phobia. I'm like, just shut the fuck up and throw up if you have to. And then it went away. It was this... It was this oh, yeah. in your head, yeah. It was yeah. in my head. Yeah, I think but we all get that to a point. Yeah. I think if you're, if you're so jaded that you don't feel anything before you go on... Oh, no, you have to... I'm still like... It's like yeah. the, the ultimate feeling when you're going on. It's like you've got to yeah. do your job properly. And when that music starts, when you, when you hear that siren starting and you know, and, and, and the curtain is there and you know that they're seeing you, is, is there anything that can really compare to that? No. Oh, There's nothing in thing. the world like it. Yeah. In, in sex, drugs, booze, nothing like it. Nothing like that feeling of getting that crowd. It's a lot different now, the green room even. Like, uh, what, what do you have? Uh, and I've seen your green rooms and it was nothing like people would think. Um, what, what do you specifically like to have in the green room uh, to snack on or, or before? Definitely tea. Teas, yeah. We were English. Yeah, it used to be all alcohol and everything. Now it's t really like green coffee. teas and <laughs> whatever sort of teas. Herbal teas. Herbal teas. <laughs> coconut water. Coconut water, yeah. You know, I can't drink it. I've tried coconut water and it's supposed to be very good for you, but it's it, it really tasted good. like armpit. It I just couldn't get used yeah. to it. Yeah. <laughs> It does. It's fucking it weird. Does. But it, but it, but it, I mean, it, how long before a show do you not like to be bothered? Like, is there is there a point where the show's about to wow. be 24 oh, hours? <laughs> <laughs> one hour, uh, uh, my one hour, uh, warm my voice up, and do my so and sit down and relax. And there's nothing that you do want to talk about. Oh, I, 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 I mean, yeah. if they fuck the hour up, I'll, I'll get pissed off. You know. It, it, it does. I mean, uh, I mean, I don't like seeing people before we go on. To be honest. But because the way we've been travelling, we've had no option because we leave straight after the gig. But we've been seeing people before, and it does throw you because you do want to get into that routine and just clear. You, you're not getting ready for the fight, you know. Because sometimes you go on stage, and, every, and everything possible can, like can go wrong, does go wrong. And, and I always said, there's nothing like a great gig, but at the same time, there's nothing like a bad gig because it's like the other end of the spectrum, you know. It's like, you, you, you get them gigs from time to time. I mean, and the us, worst from, for us, for me and Tony, is when somebody comes up and gives you the extra strong handshake. Oh. Just oh. Before, and like, oh. and they've got rings on or something. Yeah, yeah. fucking. Yeah. Yeah. Bunch yeah. of yeah. skull well, rings. Really <laughs> head bust me in the nose for all the ones. It's a lot of pain. <laughs> just, but it's amazing how some people will still, like, I, I get one before I go on the same. Don't. And, and my fucking accountant will, will literally call me. <laughs> and go, you know, Jim, the receipts from 25. Like, what the fuck is I'm going on to it. He knows I'm going on. Um, you guys, uh, I, I have, I struggle with sleep a lot. It's a, it's a tortured thing for me. And uh, Ambien, I have to take Ambien every single night. You do. Yeah. Now, does Ambien scares me? I took once during a sleep study, but I'm, then you get into that thing where you start making phone calls. Yes, on, he knows that. <laughs> Have you gotten a few geezer Ambien oh, phone yeah. calls? Yes, and emails. Oh no! What I've called them at nine o'clock in the morning. Oh, that's low. Yeah, I, I want to play ordered, drums, not bass. Ordered, 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 ordered eight thousands of things from Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> and then yes. when it comes the next week, I go, "What the hell's all this stuff?" He does. I don't remember doing it. Oh, he does. Yeah. What have you ordered that you looked at? And I ordered thirty-six. Um, <laughs> one of those rollers that you get cat lint off. Uh, yes. Cat hair off. 36 of them. I just got 24 pairs of underpants yesterday that I don't remember ordering. Oh, he's funny. He's really funny once he starts. Do you have a point when you're tired on stage where, like, for me, it's my road manager lighting his face, and I know, okay, I have X amount of time left, I'm in the home stretch. Is there a point for you guys like, that you go, okay, like, what, what moment is it for you that you go, I'm in the home stretch now, I'm okay? The drum uh, solo. After the drum solo. Yeah, the after drum after solo, the drum definitely. Solo. You know you've only got three songs to go now. What do you guys do during the drum solo, by the way? That's the great... We, we, me and Tony, we go, oh, is it now? It's getting longer and longer. And we're going, no. And he, he, keeps, he keeps announcing him. Oh, no, <laughs> Tommy could be on. And then he... Oh, no, Tommy could be... And then he carries on it's again. It's the Tommy show now. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah he seems to enjoy a good drum solo. <laughs> it is, it's getting longer and longer. It's a two hour show, we actually play one five, five minute song and there's a bit of drum Yeah, it'd be a drum, drum solo. solo. It would be great if you guys just left him out there for as long as you possibly could just to see yeah, if we he should, actually Yeah, we should go home. We should do that. <laughs> <laughs> like, like literally. We should just leave, leave him out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>